Today is Tuesday, April 28th, and I want to continue recognizing teams throughout the hospital that have gone above and beyond in their efforts to treat patients with COVID-19. You might not know the important role rehabilitation services, including occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech and language pathology, have played during this crisis. So let me introduce some more heroes to you today. Are you guys okay if we take off our masks? Yeah. All right, good. So I have with me Ashley Broadhurst, Hi. who is an occupational therapist here at Silver Cross and clinical supervisor, and Julie Janicek, who is a physical therapist on the inpatient rehabilitation floor, and Kathy Hofer, who provides speech, language, and pathology therapies. So Kathy, let's start with you. How long have you been at Silver? I've been working at Silver Cross for the past 12 years. Oh my goodness, you and I started around that, well, I'm almost, I'm almost 15, but okay. yeah, we're about the same. It goes fast. It does. And what's involved in your role in treating patients with COVID-19? Well, our role with patients with COVID-19, as well as all, all, patients. all patients, is to um, come in as the diagnostician who specializes in swallowing. Mm. So we take a look at all of the different body functions that contribute to safe swallowing so that we can help promote recovery and um, safe recovery so that um, they're able to tolerate eating and drinking in a safe manner that won't do them any kind of harm in mm. their progressive um, pattern to get to a, a healthier spot. Right. Is this particularly important if a patient's been intubated? Yes, it's especially important because swallowing is a much more complex body function than anybody can really imagine. You just think you take something to eat and you yeah. don't have to think about it. but. Respiration is a really crucial part of swallowing. You have to be able to breathe first. Uh -huh. So we take a look at things like after a patient is extubated, are they able to breathe comfortably on their own? Are they still requiring a lot of oxygen? What is their respiratory rate like, their work of breathing, so that they can safely pass something from their mouth into their stomach without the risk of that going into their airway and mm. creating an aspiration pneumonia. Something we take for granted every day. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And Kath, uh, Julie, let's move on to you. How many years have you been at Silver Cross? This is my third year at Silver Cross. Oh, you're a newbie. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, can you talk a little bit about how things have been on the inpatient rehabilitation floor? Sure. So an inpatient rehab um, is kind of the bridge between like the medical side and discharge to home. So our goal is to get patients functionally independent and strong enough so that they can do things around the house to get in and out of their car, get in and out of the bed, move on and off the toilet, get dressed, walk around the house, things like that. Right, so, so it's building up their strength yeah, again. Yeah, so and they're kind of too sick to go home, but too well to stay where they were. So we kind of bridge, you know, excellent. bridge to home. And you have had several patients on the, uh, COVID patients on yes. the inpatient floor. Yes. So it's regaining their strength and. Yes, like my one patient said when she first woke up after being on a ventilator for three weeks, she couldn't move her body at all. Oh she my. thought for sure she had had a stroke. Uh -huh. And she was paralyzed from weakness. So it's the, debil the debilitating muscle weakness from being critically ill for so long. Wow, I bet you most people didn't realize mm -hmm. how hard it is to recover from yeah, this. So yeah, so we're working with the patient currently on standing and just getting uh -huh. ready to start walking again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Ashley, how about mm -hmm. occupational therapy? What's been the role of your team? Yeah, with occupational therapy, um, we look at all the physical, the psychological, and the cognitive um, impacts that uh, this diagnosis is kind of impacting our patients and, and our goals is how that they can return to their day-to-day -day activity and uh, return home, especially during a pandemic. You know, one, it's just helping our everyday patients kind of get home and their quality of life and getting back to what they love and what shapes mm -hmm. them. Um, but especially right now, it's crucial um, during the pandemic and kind of how like everything it impacts even us as staff members and stuff of um, the anxiety and fear and the support oh, sure. we need to be um, showing with each other because of kind of the isolation restrictions. Yeah, absolutely. And I forgot to ask you, Ashley, how long have you been at Silver now? Um, I've been at Silver for about seven years. 
Okay, great. Well, clearly we have a team of real experts here. So you mentioned about the emotional, um, the, uh, the emotional feelings that all of you go through and the patients go through. So any, any comments about that, Ashley, how you connect with people during this really distressing time? Yeah, kind of like what Julie mentioned, um, patients are sometimes waking up on vents, not kind of sure why they are here in the hospital. Um, and, you know, once they know about that diagnosis of COVID positive, what does that entail? Um, so they're looking at us for support and their family members, you know, aren't being able to be there at the bedside with them. So the staff here have been amazing, um, giving them that support and that love and mm. care that they need. Mm. That's, um, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So Julie, you become part of their extended family. We really do. Yeah. We really do. And they're so grateful for the care they're receiving from therapy and nursing and everyone. Yeah. They're just so grateful. Yeah. They have such a new uh, outlook on New life. outlook on life, and absolutely. They're highly motivated for therapy. Well, that was going to be one of my questions. Like, Kathy, when um, somebody is trying to recover, it must be a time that people feel really despondent. You know, how do they get back to being who they were? And what kind of encouragement or words do you use to help them see the see a bright future? Well, I think in our case, very often just being able to have a glass of water oh. helps with that. After maybe they've been ventilated for several weeks or even just a day, and they're ready and they're using their voice and they're they're having a little bit more strength than maybe the day before and feeling better. That first drink or that mm. first little taste of real food is something that. I have the pleasure of being able to do in my therapy session, mm -hmm. and that gives them a little bit of hope to then go on and work with PT and OT, and we all really do work together. Sometimes mm -hmm. I have to have the, the PT come with me to help position somebody, or OT will help with the feeding part. So we really do all work together to try to make the process of recovery as easy as yeah. possible. That's amazing how you all work as a team and um, really help people see the pathway to what's next for them. Thank you for sharing that. Sure. Yeah, and Julie, how do you help people think about the future? Help them be optimistic. Well, we set little goals depending on where they are in their level of you know recovery. Yeah. For example, if they have stairs, you know, uh. we'll say, okay, next session we're gonna practice doing some stairs. And you know, we do have them kind of isolated in their own room. So we bring a little step into the room and practice in their room, um, depending on where they are. I have a patient right now just, wor just working on being able to stand long enough to say get dressed or for toilet hygiene. Yeah. So every time we go in, we try to stand a little longer. And right, so it's little excited. celebrations along yeah. the way. Yeah, and we yeah. get very excited. They're very motivated and they're so I'm sure. excited each time they reach a goal. Yeah, and how about you, Ashley? Yeah, for occupational therapy, it is. It, sometimes it's um, starting at the bed level and just helping them brush their teeth for the first mm. time and get a nice warm washcloth to their face uh. just brings a smile to their face even. Um, but then kind of working together with K uh, Kathy from speech and Julie with physical therapy is just um, helping progress that patient up out of bed, up to the chair, moving around the room and teaching them ways to modify things ways to energy conservation. Um, mm, that's amazing. And I think April is Occupational Therapy Month. Is that right? It is. It is. So yes. we're all celebrating the wonderful work <laughs> occupational therapists do throughout yes. the country. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, Kathy, any closing words that you would like to tell people? I think the message that I would like to get across and from all the really talented speech pathologists that are a part of our team here is that it's a really scary time. Mm -hmm. We've never experienced anything like this and in all my time in healthcare I've never experienced anything like this. And it's just so important to keep working together, keep doing what we do, keep supporting each other. Um, I think information is key. The more informed we are, right. the better we feel, the little bit less scary it is. Sure. Although it's still pretty scary. It is scary. Um, but I appreciate my colleagues and I appreciate the support that we get here and oh, that we're good. able to protect ourselves the best that we can and get to still do the jobs that we love. Yeah. Julie, Ashley, any 
additional comments? I was just going to say that when we knew the COVID positive patients were going to be coming, it was a little scary. But we were trained and we were provided with the proper PPE and we practiced, you know, properly putting everything on so we were safe. And then once I started working with these patients, that fear was just gone immediately. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's such an honor and a privilege mm -hmm. to really be part of their, re their recovery. It recovery. really, truly is. And yeah. we're just, like I said, so grateful. Right. And you were very involved with the patient who was discharged last Friday who'd yeah. been here, what, five weeks, six yeah. weeks? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That was a tremendous moment. Yes. It was. Very emotional. Yes. Yeah. Ashley, any closing words? Yeah, I just do want to say thank you to Silver Cross, you, uh, the team and stuff, because it is. Everybody's come together as a team. Um, just the passion that we have for what we do and to help our community and our patients has been tremendous. And it is very emotional to see. <laughs> and I am very proud and love working here and helping our patients. <laughs> That's so sweet. Well, we love we love it that you choose to work here. Thank you all so much for your extraordinary efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.